Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome to Book Review. Uh, this is part two of our, po- our two part edition discussing the Sunnah and its role in Islamic legislation written by Dr. Mustafa As Sabai, published by the International Islamic Publishing House. And I do recommend it for every English speaking uh, Muslim because it truly is a massive and monumental work clarifying the Sunnah and defending its allegations and refutations, quote unquote. Uh, uh, leveled against it by various people throughout the course of history. Now we're very pleased and honored to have a special person to discuss this book with us. He's from El Azhar University where he's a professor and lecturer in the Department of Language and Translation. And of course this topic needs a suitable guest so we've been waiting uh, to find the right one. Indeed we have found him with Dr. Samir Sheikh. Thank you Dr. Samir. Assalamu alaikum. Welcome to the program. Welcome back I should say. Uh, Dr. Samir, we're talking about this book. It's a a wonderful book uh, and it's very detailed and we need somebody with expertise in this field. Uh, in the part one, you had spoke about his um, response or refutation of Orientalist leveling claims against the Sunnah. Um, perhaps we can go from there. Bismillah, alhamdulillah, wa salatu wa salam ala rasulillah. And just yeah. to remind the, 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 the uh, viewers uh, that we talked about the Sunnah actually and its importance in general. And we said that the, the, the Sunnah has a very great and very important role uh, in relation to, uh, to the Quran. And it is considered to be to be truly the uh, uh, the second sort of legislation. Uh, now, through our Islamic history, we said that uh, there were attackers of uh, of the Sunnah. They are actually attackers of Islam. Correct. But they started with the Sunnah uh, in 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 order to refute the Sunnah and then jump to the Quran in yes. the end. Yes, uh, right. so, so the, yeah. this, this is the way. And uh, they have many, many allegations that the, uh, the, the, uh, the uh, scholars of Hadith actually uh, made great efforts to purify the Sunnah from, uh, from uh, first of all, uh, from the uh, fabrication. And I say just a uh, very brief uh, thing about, uh, about uh, fabrication. Fabrication of the uh, of Sunnah um, was, was due to uh, many, many reasons. We talk about that. Little and uh, juristic and uh, the of Hadith actually uh, purified the Sunnah. Uh, the, um, uh, the, uh, the, um, uh, and they actually what they did, they they very very accurate measurement of the Sunnah and all his errors. For that reason, they thought actually um, uh, of this people that this very very accurate, uh, you know, uh, um, conditions to accept the narration of that people. Uh, among these is actually uh, that the uh, the narrator be just, very just and truthful. Truthful and just, yeah. and is trustworthy. Is very first of all, and secondly, be accurate in, uh, in memory. In memory, very accurate. And this is in Arabic, but adat we just and about to be accurate. Oh, and the, concerning the adat as just, they will never be anything. They, they are very just, yeah. and if anything happened concerning just, would refuse right. all the way. They would re- refuse the hadith. And concerning the uh, but. Or, uh, or the uh, memory. memory of the rito, they actually, they actually took the uh, the um, the hadith with less accuracy, but supported this hadith with each other. Now let that uh, uh, be uh, later on okay. to, to talk out, and we start actually to, uh, to see how the Sunnah was a, a very important source in, in Islamic legislation. First of all, it is, it is um, something good to to first. Define the word Sunnah for, uh, in, in different aspects of uh, Islamic uh, uh, culture. Because there is confusion on Muslims. Right. Uh, actually, the Sunnah itself can be defined in many ways. For the uh, in, uh, scholars of Hadith and for the scholars of uh, uh, Fiqh and the scholars of Usul al Fiqh. But the scholars of Hadith actually, when I, I say the word Sunnah, it means absolutely everything everything collected and attributed to the Prophet, peace be upon him. Yes. Never, it is, it is regardless of what this is talking about rulings, talking about stories of the Prophet, talking about his bright wife, everything at, at a, um, attributed to the Prophet yeah. that, that include sayings, acts, approvals, uh, Tacit uh, approval. his, his, his moral description and his physical description in the meantime. Yes. Physi- physical yeah. description. Yeah. They, they 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 gave a hadith about his physical description. Many a hadith. Yes, yes. It was very very uh, lovely to yeah. uh, to to read that. Uh, and uh, this is this. So the attribution, every att- thing attributed to the prophet, they collected. So this is this is the Sunnah concerning uh, uh, hadith. And for that reason, we we call 
uh, the books that are compiled in the Sunnah, that is Bukhari and Muslim and um, uh, Tirmizi, Ibn Majah and Anisai, all these books, we, uh, we compile them from the perspective of collecting everything about the Prophet. I see. Including everything, including rulings, including stories, including, um, uh, um, uh, you know, you know, um, uh, something relating to the, the day of judgment and okay. akhirah yeah. and everything, okay. everything. Okay. And then we have the definition of the sunnah from uh, from the perspective of uh, of yeah. the fuqaha, the jurists. Actually, the meaning of the sunnah uh, concerning the fuqaha uh, is that it is something against the Quran. It is if the Quran is, is giving um, uh, a ruling which is obligatory, the Sunnah is, is giving something which is, uh, you know, recommended. So I say I, I, I prayed to two rakahs, uh, Sunnah. Example, yeah. So Sunnah here is something, if you do that, you will be rewarded. If you don't do it, uh, no punishment, no blame. So uh, actually, th th this is, this is the, a very important point to the jurists. Sunnah means the second, the second ruling of the five general rulings. That is, after obligatory, it is Sunnah. It means if you do it, you will be right. re rewarded. If you don't do it, no punishment, no blame. And for the scholars of Usul al fiqh actually, the Sunnah means the second source of Islamic legislation. Meaning that you can find in the Sunnah something that the Quran didn't mention directly. Yes. So, so, so uh, I can f uh, get from the Sunnah something <coughs> which is obligatory and something which is recommended, something which is permissible. Right. And something which is disliked or prohibited. Uh, so it, it, it is, this, is, this is the way of Usul al-Fiqh to talk about the Sunnah, meaning that we uh, we uh, we to consider the Sunnah to be the second source of Islamic legislation after the Quran, meaning also that we can have every ruling, general ruling from the Sunnah that the Quran didn't talk about. For yes. example, uh, if I talk I talk about something obligatory in the Sunnah, it's not in the Quran. Right. The Quran didn't. Uh, 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 clarify to us how to pray. For example, right. he said establish prayer. But how the Sunnah did it? Yes. Uh, the Prophet said, "Sallu kama ra'aytumuni usalli." Pray as you see me praying. So, uh, in, in that case, the details of the uh, salah, how to stand reciting the Quran, bowing, prostrating yourself, and so on, and so on, is got from the Quran, and it is obligatory to to do. Yes. Second, for example, something recommended from the Sunnah and it is not from the Quran. To fast, for, for example, to, to pray, first of all, uh, something before and after the, the five daily prayers. Right, right. And to, uh, to, to pray uh, Salatul Layl and to, to pray al duha and also to fast something other than the, the, the months of Ramadan. Right. For example, Arafah, tenths of Muharram three days every month and so right, on. Right. This is not in the Quran, right. but the Sunnah clarifies it. Yeah, okay. Uh, and, and second, after that, something permissible, something permissible is to, uh, you know, uh, the Prophet did um, many things to show that it is, uh, it is permissible to do it that way or that or way. way. Okay. For, for example, drinking. The Prophet drank while he was standing and while he was sitting okay. to prove that it is it is allowed uh, it to is allowed both. for you to do uh, both ways okay. uh, and the and the the the, uh, the uh, disliked so, uh, the the false thing is disliked some some dislike to take him from the sunnah uh, to, for example to uh, to go to the mosque while you have eating garlic or onions right. because it hurts your Muslim colleagues right. and you shouldn't do that but it is not uh, it is uh, it's not appropriate to do it because it is disliked in the Sharia right. sure, sure. not prohibited and then the last thing which is uh, it's prohibited in the Sunnah but not in the Quran to fast in the day of Eid for example for example fasting right. in the day of Eid is prohibited because right. you have to celebrate with yeah. your um, your uh, brothers and the Muslim colleagues 
with with the uh, with that with that occasion to eat and drink and so on. We find that in the Sunnah, not in the Quran. Is that you find that in the Sunnah, not in the Quran? Okay, okay. Uh, so these 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 are the uh, examples about the Sunnah being a second source of legislation. Okay. We take examples not in the Quran. Now, actually, yes. I'm sorry, Doctor. Yeah. If we could yeah. now that you clarified this for us. Uh, the role of the Sunnah in Islamic legislation. Perhaps we can take a short break and we'll get back and continue, sure. inshallah. You guys at home, stay tuned for more uh, book review. We, we are continuing to discuss the Sunnah and its role in Islamic legislation with Dr. Samir Sheikh, so don't go anywhere. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back to Book Review. Uh, this is part two of our second part series of discussing the Sunnah and its, and its role in Islamic legislation with Dr. Samir al Sheikh. Dr. Samir, you only have about 13, 14 minutes left. I know you have a lot to go over. Um, so continue, please. Uh, we were talking about the importance of the Sunnah, and actually, we, the, we study that under the terminology of the Hujjiyya to Sunnah. Hujjiyat al-Sunnah means the authority of the Sunnah. How Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala delegated the Prophet even to legislate. You right, yes, look yes. Look at that. Yes. Even to legislate, oh yes, it is by revelation. It's, uh, he, he doesn't do anything by his own, uh, his own desires. Right. Now, uh, before that, I come over uh, some um, allegation of, uh, of the people who attack the Sunnah, saying that, uh, we depend only on the Quran because the Quran says ma farratuna fil kitab min shay we haven't neglected anything in the uh, in the Quran uh, well actually that uh, to be refuted is to say that uh, the Quran gave general and comprehensive principles and these principles ha have to be detailed yeah, of course. and branch it branch it off so uh, the sunnah actually does that and yes. it is it is a part of legislation and they said that um, uh, they said that uh, 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 this ma farratuna fil kitab min shay, and he they say that the the ayah of the Quran that inna nahn nazzalna dikra wa inna lahu lahafidun, meaning that we have uh, we have uh, sent down the revelation that's the Quran, and we 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 are to preserve it to preserve it. So. The Quran is, is kept preserved, and so we don't need the Sunnah uh, anyway. We say we say about that that uh, that the Sunnah actually uh, is a delegation from Allah Subhanahu wa Taala to the Prophet. Yes. Uh, the Quran is a comprehensive constitution, and the Sunnah is to be uh, is to detail on it. Uh, uh, we say we say in um, in general that the functions of the, the Sunnah in relation to the Qur'an are as follows. Something in the Qur'an uh, which is given in, um, uh, you know, comprehensive or general, and it has to be uh, obvious. It is made obvious by the Prophet that we call in Usul al-Fiqh, um, Bayan al-Mujmal, as is something which is not obvious, it is only in general. Okay. How to do it, we don't know. Right. So the, the Sunnah comes to do it. Okay. That is, uh, for example, the Prophet said, Sallu kama usalli. That is, pray as you see me praying. Yes. How should I know the details of the Salah except by, right. by following the Prophet in his, in his example. Right. Uh, second, to do something that is uh, uh, specifying what is general. Specifying what is general, uh, general, uh, general means that if I have a ruling in the Quran, uh, um, in general, that includes all whatsoever we talk about. Uh, for example, وَالزَّانِيَةُ the, وَالزَّانِي فَجْلِدُوا كُلَّ وَاحِدٍ مِنْهُمَا مِئَةَ جَلْدَ The man, male and female who, uh, who commit adultery, so flog them a uh, uh, hundred lashes. Uh, it is not in the in the in the book of Allah to stone to death. The uh, the, the the Prophet peace be upon him came to say that we specify some group of uh, those uh, uh, adulterers uh, to stone them to death, and this is the the hukm of Allah subhanahu wa taala. We have to accept it. Uh, uh, also, uh, third is to specify 
uh, I, mean, I, mean, I mean qualify or limit what is absolute. If the Sunnah is talking about something absolute in the, uh, uh, the Quran is talking about something absolute, the, the Sunnah comes to specify it, I mean, I mean to qualify it. When, when Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that وَالسَّارِقْ وَالسَّارِقَةُ فَقَطَعُوا أَيْدِيَهُمَا The, the, the uh, uh, male and female um, thief cut their hands. Okay? So we don't know what, what to, to cut yeah. the hand here or here or here. Yeah. The Sunnah came to, to, put, to, to, to uh, put conditions uh, to that. Uh, first of all, the hand is not cut for less than a quarter of a dinar, Islamic dinar. It was, it was a value at that time right. and we can, we can calculate it. Uh, and, and, and second, that thing which is stolen should be in a, a locked up place, right. hers. Yeah. Uh, so we, we, we shouldn't, uh, if he, he has taken something in the, uh, in the way, in the road, yeah, yes. so we shouldn't, we shouldn't yeah. cut his hand. We only, only uh, subject him to ta'zir, and ta'zir that is, that's punishment. a punishment uh, 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 left to the judge. And also, uh, here we, uh, we, we have about that, uh, that the, uh, the cutting should be this, the palm, the palm of the right hand, palm of okay. the right hand. Okay. So all of these are qualifying the ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala uh, by the Sunnah. Also the Sunnah came to add some, uh, some other items in, in a general uh, ruling of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Details, for example, uh, the Quran says, forbidden upon, upon you, that is in marriage. Forbidden up, upon you is your mothers, your daughters, right. your sisters, and so on and so forth. It, it enumerates yes. some of the prohibited uh, 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 women to ask for marriage. The Sunnah comes to add something else that is not to gather between the woman and her maternal or maternal aunt. Okay. This is not in the Quran. So it added something okay. to okay. them. Uh, uh, and, and the last, the Sunnah can can be independent in legislation, meaning to, to, to state something which is not absolutely in the, in the Quran, is not, is not in, in the Quran by any way. Uh, for example, we say, the Prophet said, uh, talked about some, some law of nowadays, that is the, uh, uh, the uh, uh, public ownership, public ownership. Yes. The Prophet said, النَّاسُ شُرَكَاءُ فِي ثَلَاثِ that means people are partners, partners in three things. The uh, water, graze, and, uh, and uh, fire. And fire here means all, all the, all, uh, all the uh, everything that is uh, um, uh, in, in the, uh, in the in ground the earth, yes. that, is, that, that that's, uh, that's gives a, a fuel and... Uh, and oh, the, certainly, uh, yes, uh, You know? Yeah. Uh, so... Um, uh, here the Prophet, uh, peace be upon him, talked about the uh, public ownership and he is legislating. People, uh, people shouldn't, shouldn't own water, sources right. of water. People shouldn't own areas of grazing. People shouldn't own for themselves the uh, what is what are the, 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 the resources under the ground. Yeah. So, so this is this is actually a legislated independently by the by the, given by the Sunnah. Yes. Okay. For that reason, we say that the, the Sunnah can legislate by its own. Okay. So, actually, to to say that the Sunnah we can't depend on the Sunnah. How should we 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 we, we know all of that? Uh, if we we not depended on the Sunnah, and one thing very important actually, that is, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala supported the Sunnah in the Quran and give delegation for the Sunnah to legislate and to uh, clarify, to explain, and to detail everything. Uh, Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says in the Quran, uh, describing the Prophet. Uh, uh, he is not uttering based on his own uh, own desires and whims it is a revelation revealed and he said and whatever the, the prophet uh, actually gave you as instructions and rulings take it and what he uh, he, he, um, uh, he forbade you to to do uh, abstain from it okay. uh, and also 
uh, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in many verses of the Quran فَلَا وَرَبِّكَ لَا يُؤْمِنُونَ حَتَّى يُحَكِّمُوكَ فِي مَا شَجَرَ بَيْنَهُمْ ثُمَّ لَا يَجِدُوا فِي أَنفُسِهِمْ حَرَجًا مِمَّا قَضَيْتَ وَيُسَلِّمُوا تَسْلِيمًا That is, by Allah, uh, by Allah, they will not be believers, those be the companions shouldn't be believers, they are not described as believers, except when they take what you, uh, you, you will give them, and they, they, they feel not in their hearts, any uh, embarrassing, yes. you know, uh, and submit absolutely to the Prophet. Uh, many, many verses of the Quran, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is giving the Prophet the absolute authority to legislate. So, after that, how should we, we, we neglect the Sunnah? How should we neglect the Sunnah? We cannot neglect the Sunnah because the, the Quran gave authority to the Sunnah uh, to us as Muslims. And actually, uh, when you see that the uh, uh, that the Quran itself, uh, you we know we know that ma farratna fil kitab min shay. We haven't neglected in the Quran. Allah Subhanahu wa Taala says, uh, but uh, that is talking about general principles and rules. Certainly, how to branch off, how to explain, how to make obvious, how to uh, talk about something new. Uh, delegated by Allah to the Prophet, peace be upon him. This is very, very important. Dr. Sumer, thank you for clarifying that. And I, I believe it's very necessary because there is confusion even in, amongst the Muslim uh, world what is the meaning and stat status of the Sunnah. But you did mention a verse from the Quran when you said Allah has revealed the, the remembrance or the dhikr. And you said, and we will preserve it. And you said people use this as a proof against the Sunnah. When in fact, can we say that when Allah says the dhikr or the remembrance, can we say that this word includes the Sunnah? The Quran and the Sunnah, can we say that or no? Some, some of the verses of the Quran mentions the, uh, the Zikr as the, uh, uh, as the Quran itself. But in, in some other verses, um, it, it, uh, it, uh, it mentions the Sunnah as the wisdom. So, so Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala revealed the Zikr and the Zikr here, here is mainly the Quran. Okay. But uh, it, it, it has revealed also what is so called the wisdom. Yes. And the wisdom this is, that, that applies to the, to sunnah. the sunnah. Okay. So we have two things you have to abide by. And actually I see that uh, for, the, uh, for the student or those who are seeking knowledge, yes. uh, they can find in, in, the, in the sunnah uh, um, irrefutable, uh, you know, irrefutable uh, um, arguments and the proofs in order to stand against those who are trying to destruct and strike in the in the Sunnah to remove it and then attack, start to attack the Quran. Uh, actually, we need to study that book very, very much. We need that yes, very, yeah. very much. And actually, this issue, this case is old and new in the meantime. Yes, yes. Uh, throughout history, we have we have seen that those who are attacking the Sunnah, and throughout history and and now, until nowadays, yes. we see the same allegations and same doubts. Yes. So we have to face that. Thank you, Dr. Samir Sheikh. I certainly appreciate your time. I look okay. forward to seeing you hopefully in another episode soon, inshallah. Inshallah. I certainly appreciate it. And I want you guys at home to definitely check out this book, The Sunnah and Its Role in Islamic Legislation uh, by Dr. Mustafa Sabai. Very well explained uh, with our with the, Dr. Samir Sheikh, our professor in, uh, from Al Azhar University. Uh, a wonderful book indeed uh, for Muslims and non Muslims. Authoritative, uh, massive, monumental, important work. And it's been translated into English. So may Allah bless the author and his translators because that's been very beneficial for myself and I hope for you guys as well. Uh, so until next time, I leave you in the care of Allah. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.